Hi everyone, my name is Scarlett He, and today I would like to present my thesis on dental material with the topic Comparative Deionization Rate of Dental Restorative Material with Bovine Dentin. And um, for this thesis, I would like to thank the help of Dr. Herbert Edwards and Professor Coronado. So, um, just some quick information on dental restoration or what's commonly called dental fillings. Um, it is one of the most common procedures performed in the dental uh, clinics today. Uh, however, it is not permanent due to many factors like tooth decay. And tooth decay is majorly caused by first external trauma and second demineralization of tooth structure caused by bacterial acid attack. So, um, to go into demineralization a little bit. It is a reversible process. You can think of it as um, two sides on a chemical equation. So it's constantly going back and forth and um, the demineralization is caused by the loss of ions. So in this context, we are majorly talking about phosphate and calcium. And this process is induced by low pH and uh, in a normal scenario, demineralization and remineralization should be in a pretty good balance so that we are not losing a lot of tooth structure. And uh, in our mouth, the saliva is actually the reservoir for um, the ions that we talked about before. Um, so um, in modern restoration manufacturing, uh, ma uh, restorative material manufacturing, um, people are thinking about whether we can make restorative material as a source of those ions. So you can think if we have, um, you know, a, a huge amount of um, ions in those materials, it can add more to the right side of the equation. So it can like sort of push back on the demineralization process and help fight it. So um, just to go into the calcium and fluoride in our mouth, um, calcium ion, uh, it's majorly in the form of hydroxyapatite with um, the chemical structure shown here on the slide. And it is um, what Denton crust crystalline matrix is made of. And it get be demineralized at a pretty low pH. And fluoride ion, it forms fluoroapatite um, with this chemical equation from hydroxyapatite when hydroxyapatite is demineralized. And the good thing about fluoride, uh, fluoroapatite is that it demineralized at a lower pH. So you can think when um, hydroxyapatite is demineralized, it get combined with fluoride ion and form a really strong and nice protective layer um, at the surface of your tooth and um, it, it's resistant to um, sort of more resistant to bacterial acid attack and um, fluoride ion itself is metabolically toxic to bacteria so this is a really um, you know good source to fight um, bacterial attack in our mouth um, even our tap water um, uh, some in some areas are fluoridated to um, help with this aspect. So um, just to go into the brief history of different types of dental restorative materials, first we're gonna start with amalgam. It is um, the oldest and it has been used um, in the field for over 150 years. Um, the good thing about it is that it's very cheap and it's mechanically very strong since it's just um, an alloy. Um, however, um, it is metal colored, so not very aesthetic. And um, people have some safety concern about it because mercury uh, is contained in amalgam. So um, there are some cases um, reported that um, the patients have had some allergic reaction to this material. So there are some debates today on its use. Um, so to combat the allergy and um, color issue, um, people invented composite in the 60s. So um, it's this tooth colored material, uh, as you can see from the slide, it you know fits a shade match with the teeth pretty well and um, has pretty reliable performances in small cavities. 
Um, and the good thing about it is that it's um, simpler handling than glass enamel that we're going to talk about next. Um, however, it's a little bit more technique sensitive than amalgam and um, it has pretty bad, um, pretty high secondary caries rate. So after you put in composite into the tooth, um, there is a pretty high risk that um, the filling is going to fall out. And this material is simply um, composite. It has no fluoride uh, or calcium uh, incorporated in its matrix. So um, to uh, combat this issue, people introduced glass alnomer in 1972 and it has fluoride incorporated into its matrix, um, however it has no calcium. Um, the, and this material is re really hydrophilic, so you can think that in our oral environment we have a lot of saliva and it's a wet environment, so this allows better bonding to the teeth in such aqueous environment. Um, however, compared to um, amalgam and composite, this material is mechanically weaker and it is less wear resistant. Um, so later in the game, people introduced resin modified glass ionomer, um, which is just um, glass ionomer with some resin introduced into the matrix. Um, so it can help you know, boost some um, some of the uh, wear resistance and mechanical strength aspect, and um, it can be light cured, uh, which is to uh, when when you put in the material, you can just shine a UV light to it, and the material can set quickly, and is easier. Um, it's quicker in the office, and it's easier um, to treat um, young patients, so that they don't they don't move that much. And um, Fuji 2LC, uh, which I will use as uh, a sample in this research, is a type of resin modified glass enamel. And uh, in 2013, um, a company called um, Popdent released this new material called Activa Bioactive. Um, it is released in 2013 and um, they brand it as enhanced resin modified glass enamel. So it has, um, they, they say that it has a bioactive res resin matrix, uh, which allows it to release more fluoride and calcium than traditional glass enamers. Um, however, in the literature, there are not um, many published results um, supporting its claim. Um, I think there are several papers about this. However, um, the results are conflicting. And um, in 2017, even more recently, um, um, this new material called Equia Forte is released. And um, compared to uh, resin modified glass ionomers like Fuji 2LC and um, Activa Bioactive, which also has resin in it, um, this material is a pure glass ionomer. Um, however, they introduced a new technique called glass hybrid. They call it glass hybrid uh, restorative system. So um, what they do is they use different size of glass particles when designing the glass ionomer. So um, they have um, they um, they also include really high molecular weight polyacrylic acid matrix in it. So um, this is supposed to um, boost the uh, wear resistance of this material. So to make it um, mechanically stronger and chemically more stable. And uh, they claim to um, have a higher um, fluoride release also. Um, however, the problem right now between different material is that um, um, the literature doesn't have a whole lot of um, quantitative comparison between materials, um, especially with bovine dent uh, with dentin. So, um, if, if we're trying to um, reverse um, the deionization equation in our mouse, we need to we need to compare um, the ion release of the material with actual tooth to see you know whether that number is higher and it's um, capable of like um, functioning as a reservoir of ions. Um, yeah, and like mentioned before, um, there are not a lot of data comparing Activa Bioactive and Equia Forte since there are uh, some newer materials. 
So um, the hypothesis that I have is that glass ionomer will have a significantly higher fluoride releasing rate than amalgam composite and bovine dentin. And um, Activa Bioactive, as it claims, will have a significantly higher calcium and fluoride release rate than other materials. So to go into the method of my research, um, first for the dentin extra extractions, um, I obtained um, a cow head used in uh, local meat production and it is fresh slaughtered and I extracted um, its tooth and shaped it into one time two time 0.2 centimeter size. So you can see on the lower right, this is the size of the dentin. And for each material, um, amalgam, Filtec composite, which is just a, a traditional composite, um, Fuji 2LC, which is the resin modified glass anomer, uh, Activa Bioactive, and Equia Forte uh, glass anomer. I shaped um, those using a custom made mode and um, light uh, setting to um, set it into the same size of the bovine dentin. And after successfully, successfully shaping the material, I incubated all of them in DIY water. And um, so the materials are uh, incubated for a, a week. And um, after that, water is changed and um, the fluoride and calcium level in the water extracted is uh, measured using calcium and fluoride probe. And um, I created a standard curve um, to get the actual value of calcium and fluoride concentration. And this process is repeated for 12 weeks to um, get a, a, a sense of how much um, ions they are releasing over a long course. So um, to go into the result of fluoride, um, this is the master um, graph of different materials. Um, uh, the the yellow line is Equia Forte. I added this uh, later in the game, so it only contains um, the uh, the results in the first three weeks. But you can see that um, um, Equia Forte, which is the pure the new pure glass element, is you know on the top of releasing um, fluoride. Um, the second is Fuji 2LC, which is the resin modified glass ionomer. And to our surprise, Activa Bioactive, um, it is not higher than Fuji 2LC and Equia Forte. And the other materials like dentin, composite, and amalgam, since um, they don't contain any fluoride in it, as expected, it has like pretty low um, fluoride release. And um, something to notice is that um, for the y-axis on this graph, we are um, in log scale. So um, you can see that um, the difference between Equia Forte Fuji 2LC and Activa Bioactive is actually quite large. So um, just to compare um, the ion release between week, week 1 and week 12 um, to see if that uh, ion release is a long course thing. I put um, the starting point and the end point at a bar graph um, to see. Uh, you can see that um, the Fuji 2LC is really not changing that much. Even um, at the end of the 12th week, it's still like releasing a, a pretty significant amount um, of fluoride. And Activa Bioactive, um, it is still releasing um, some level of fluoride at the end, however, um, the drop is more drastic. And um, just to compare um, the fluoride re release in week one, you can see the newer um, glass ionomer included materials like Equiforte Fuji 2LC and Activa Bioactive, um, they're quite um, capable in the release of fluoride. You can see that there is a clear divide between the new material and the old uh, material with dentin. So um, I would like to compare um, the different new materials. So this is um, 
um, week one of fluoride release of Fuji 2LC Activa Bioactive and Equia Forte. Um, uh, this time um, the y-axis is in normal scale. So you can see there is quite a huge difference between the materials um, with Equia Forte releasing um, around the 700 in the first week and um, Fuji 2LC around 200 and Activa Bioactive is around um, 10 so it's it's quite low compared to the other two materials yeah and I would like to um, trace um, the difference in Fuji 2LC and Activa Bioactive over time uh, and you can you can see that um, Fuji 2LC it experienced some drop after um, week two but after a while um, in the uh, last couple of weeks, it gets stabilized um, around 50 part per million um, of fluoride release. So it get, gets stabilized around there and um, it can have like a long-term releasing effect of fluoride. And um, Activa Bioactive, it is um, a lot lower and at the end of um, at, at, the, at the last part of the experiment, it's really not releasing that much of fluoride. And um, I graphed the change, um, the percent change of fluoride release from week one to week 12 of Fuji 2LC and Activa Bioactive. And you can, you can see that, that Fuji 2LC, um, the fluoride release, um, the decrease in fluoride release is quite, um, less than the decrease of Activa Bioactive um, it was a p-value smaller than 0.05 um, the difference is significant so Activa Bioactive um, other than releasing less fluoride in the first game um, its effect tends to fade more uh, over time so to go into the result in calcium, um, here is a master um, graph over time for the different materials. And you can see the pink line that's really standing out. It is the dentin. So um, fluoride and calcium are, are quite different. Fluoride, um, oftentimes you need an, an outside source like fluoridated um, tap water or um, fluoride containing toothpaste to you know have a boost of fluoride in your mouth and um, the cows that we used you know they don't they don't have a source of fluoride um, so fluoride you know there there really is not that much fluoride in the tooth however calcium um, hydroxyapatite like we talked about before um, is a really important source of um, the tooth matrix so you can see here that um, bovine dentin, you know, as you um, soak it in DI water, it has a um, pretty significant release of um, calcium over time. So this is demineralization um, going on in the tube. And um, you, can, you can see that Activa Bioactive at first, um, um, it has a pretty high calcium release, however, like, um, that is not long lasting after week two um, as you can see here um, uh, the effect is um, the, 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 the calcium release of the Activa Bioactive uh, is overrated by the dentin and we're going to go into more details in that um, yeah so, so as you can see um, just comparing the calcium release of week one and week twelve all of the materials experience a pretty significant drop in the calcium release um, from week one to week 12. However, dentin is the reverse. Um, you know, over the course of 12 week, um, the calcium release um, increased compared to decreased. So just to compare dentin and Activa, um, as we said before, after week two um, dentin release more calcium than activa so um, if this is not in a lab condition if this is in the patient's mouth uh, we can we can we can see that maybe after week 12 uh, we, maybe after week two um, activa cannot function as a reservoir of 
of calcium since um, the dentin would release more calcium. And yeah, uh, from week one to week twelve, you can you can see that dentin is um, increase uh, is having a higher release of calcium, whereas um, Activa experienced a really sharp drop. So um, the conclusion in fluoride is that um, newly designed materials, um, so the glass enamel involved types, are pretty effective at uh, releasing fluoride. And Equia Forte, um, as the new pure glass enamel material, it releases a really significant um, more amount of fluoride than, than other materials. And Fuji 12C, um, the resin modified glass enamel, it is a pretty reliable source of fluoride um, in the long term. Um, however, Activa Bioactive's fluoride releasing ability, it is inferior to um, other type of um, resin modified glass enamers. Like it's lower than Fuji 2LC and Equia Forte, um, not as the company claimed. And the conclusion uh, in calcium is that um, dental material, uh, dental restorative materials, long-term calcium release, uh, it, it, its ability do not exceed dentin. So manufacturers need to work on more of its calcium releasing ability to make restor restorative material good reservoirs um, for calcium. And um, Activa Bioactive, it is uh, really capable of releasing some level of calcium into the uh, environment, uh, however, for really for only a short amount of time. It cannot function as a long-term remedy for calcium demineralization. So, um, some future plans for this research um, is that I'm going to finish um, the measurement for Equia Forte for the rest of 12 weeks um, to see how it's like uh, in the long term. And um, I would conduct experiments on the remineralization ability of different restorative materials and bovine dentin. And um, I would also conduct similar experiments in vivo or in artificial saliva if I get the chance so that it, um, it imitates and real um, or environment better. And I might also measure the ion exchange rate of phosphorus ions because other than um, calcium and fluoride, phosphorus is also a really uh, big component in our um, dental matrix. Here is my bibliography. And if you have any questions, feel free to post in the comment section. And thank you.